Hello, this is Chris Neal from South Plains College. Welcome back to my Pro Tools how-to video series, MIDI. The following video is kind of the basics on edit modes and edit tools, some of the things we need just to get started in MIDI. So we'll be talking about those edit modes and edit tools, grid setup, main and sub time scales, the mix window view and instrument aux input and MIDI tracks. My keystrokes modifiers will be shown at the bottom of the screen. If you're on a PC, there's a guide to conversion at the end of this video. Here are some shortcuts that you can use. The F keys for one through four for the edit modes and five through 10 for your edit tools. F6 and seven or seven and eight will get you the smart tool. So the first thing we'll talk about are the edit modes. You should have covered these in a previous class. Uh, but let's do a little reminder. The slip mode here, F2, allows you to move things or select things freely. So you can move and select without any limitations as far as timing is concerned. So that is the slip mode. Free movement, free selection, wherever you want. You can see the grid back there. As I move it, I can put it anywhere I want in between that grid. Doesn't matter, it's not snapping to anything. It's not uh, restricting me in any way as far as selections are concerned. All right, so next let's look at grid mode. So F4, in grid mode, your selection is based on the grid. You can see as I'm making a selection here, or if I grab a clip, it's gonna snap to the grid and then move by the grid amount. So your selection is based on the grid. Your movements are based on the grid. Where's the grid? This is your grid. So this button allows you to show and hide the grid down there. So when I have it hidden, the grid mode still works. We just don't see the grid. So that just shows the grid or hides the grid. And then next to that, we can choose the grid. So we can choose based on uh, bars and beats. And that's kind of based on our time scale, which we'll talk about in a second. So I'm moving it by quarter notes now. So... I can choose the grid amount in this area. So another version is called relative grid. So that was absolute grid in blue. Um, and relative grid here, if I choose it, is in purple. And that is movements relative to the grid. So I'm going to move that off the grid really quick. So now we're looking at a relative grid mode, and now I move things relative to the grid. So I'm selecting by the grid amount, as you see here, but if I grab and move this region now, it's going to maintain that distance or relative position to the grid as I move it. So it'll move it by a quarter note, but it'll keep that same relative relationship to the grid. So let me move it and line up that transient with that grid. So let's say we had a pickup note or something like that. Uh, so the timing of this clip is fine. I just want to move it by a quarter note. So you see how that transient still stays lined up with the grid. It's moving it by a quarter note, but again, it's keeping its relative position to the grid. If I go back to absolute, it's going to move it to the grid and then it moves it by quarter note. So that first move was not a quarter note move. It moved it to the grid and then movements after that were on the grid. Okay, so that's the basics of slip and grid mode. So next let's talk briefly about shuffle and spot mode. So let me put these things back and let's go into shuffle mode. When I move a clip in shuffle mode, it's gonna snap to the clip in front of it or snap to the clip behind it if there are clips in front or behind. If not, it'll snap to the beginning of the session. Okay, so let me snap these together. So that's a cool thing. With shuffle mode, you can just snap regions right together. Um, now, if I grab this clip at the end, this fourth clip, and put it in between the first and second, the third and fourth clips will move to the right. Okay, so things shuffle around. Clips shuffle around. Sorry, sometimes I call clips regions because that's what they used to be called. So again, if I grab this fourth clip and move it into the spot, the second and third shift to fourth. And when I grabbed the second one and shifted it to the third spot, things shuffled around. So that's why it's called shuffle mode. The clips move around. Okay, next is spot mode. 
So we can click on the button or use F4. In spot mode, if I click on a clip, it's gonna open up the spot dialog box. I can enter a new start time and it'll jump right to that. So I type in 12 and then back to nine. It also has a handy feature down at the bottom, original timestamp. So whenever you record anything into Pro Tools, it remembers exactly where you recorded it. So if you accidentally shift or move something, you can go into spot mode, click on it, and you can click the arrow to the right of the original timestamp and that will put the original timestamp up into the start and then you can hit OK and that will move it back to its original place. Pretty handy. Okay, next let's look at zoom tools. So we have these two arrows to the right and left here that we can click on that will zoom in. We can also click and drag to the left or right to continuously zoom in or out. And this zooms on the selection and the beginning of the selection. So let me select another little spot here. So I have a selection and then I start to zoom. And what happens is the beginning of the selection centers in the screen as you then zoom in. So I can zoom in or out and it's based around the selection. We also have an audio zoom and that just zooms the waveform up and down. It doesn't change our amplitude. It just allows us to zoom in and maybe see something that's quieter and just see the waveform a little larger. And next thing over is our MIDI zoom. And if we're in note view, um, we can make the MIDI notes bigger or smaller so we can see more notes in a smaller track. When we want to zoom in and see a certain part, uh, we can zoom up or down, making the MIDI notes bigger or smaller, as you can see here. All right, next we have the zoomer tool. If you click and hold on the tool buttons, you see options for the tools. So we're going to be in normal zoom real quick. And let's look at what that does. If I click and drag, it'll zoom in on the selected area. I can hold option and zoom out. If I just click, it will zoom in and I can option click to zoom out. So that behavior is similar to those arrows that we clicked on over there. Okay, so one other benefit of this zoomer tool is uh, I can double click on it and it will zoom the longest track in my session to fit on screen. So a good shortcut to get everything on screen. So next we'll go to the trimmer tool. Trimmer tool trims from either end in. So I'm in grid mode, so you see it's moving it by the grid amount right now. So if I'm at the right end, you see the trimmer tool facing that direction. If I move to the beginning of the clip, you see it reverse and it trims the beginning of the clip. So you can see it reverses itself over the middle. You can also just click. I don't have to go to the end and drag in. I can just click where I want to go. Um, so you see how it kind of reverses and I can again just trim by clicking. Now what if I wanted to trim the end all the way in over here, which is not a big deal now, but what if this is a four minute long audio region? So I can hold down option, reverse the trim tool and click and it'll trim the end towards the beginning. So there are other versions of the trimmer tool, which we will not talk about right now. For right now, just make sure you're using the standard version. So on the selector tool, I can select audio, MIDI, whatever it might be. Right now, again, I'm in grid mode, so I'm selecting on the grid. I can double click within a clip and it will select the whole clip, or I can triple click on a track and it will select all clips on that track. So again, you can make a selection, you can double click within a clip, or you can triple click within a clip. The grabber tool has multiple options as well. We'll talk about the time grabber. The grabber tool allows you to grab and move clips. So you can click on a clip and it will select the entire clip. Same goes for MIDI tracks and clips as long as you're in clip view. And the scrubber tool allows you to scrub a clip by clicking on it and dragging. And the pencil tool will actually draw waveforms if you're zoomed in far enough on an audio file. And it is the smart tool for MIDI and we'll talk about that in a separate video. Okay, the smart tool, we can get to the smart tool by clicking the bar above the trimmer selector and grabber tools right there. And with the smart tool, when we hover over a clip, when we hover over the bottom portion, we will get the grabber tool. When we hover over the top half, we will have the selector tools. So when I hover over the bottom half, I have the grabber. I can click and select the whole clip. I hover over the top. I can make a selection by clicking and dragging. So we also have access to the trimmer tool. So on the lower two thirds, you get the trimmer tool. On the top third, you get the fade tool. So it allows you to do all kinds of editing. You can grab, select, trim, 
put fade in and fade out. You can also put in a crossfade if you hover over the bottom portion where two clips come together. So next we have the main time scale. So we can choose bars, beats, minutes and seconds, or time code, samples, whatever works for us. We can also show the sub counter and see multiple. So we can see bars and beats and minutes and seconds. If you remember from the grid, which shows the grid on screen and what value we have to show down there, show an eighth notes down there, whatever. So down at the bottom, it says follow main time scale. So that will change based on what we have. So we have, if we go to minutes and seconds for our main time scale, we go over to the grid. The grid is now in a time base. And if we turn off follow main time scale, so if we uncheck that and we're in grid mode here, we can swap over to minutes and seconds and we our grid is still showing a bars and beats. So we can have it follow that or not follow that. So continuing on on our toolbar, we have a transport showing here in our edit window. Well, we control that with this mini menu over here so we can turn on or off different functions and features that we want up here. So I've turned off the transport. I like to have the transport showing there and I like to have MIDI controls, um, especially if I'm working on anything MIDI. So I like to show those. So we can also show these components in the transport window. So command one on the number pad and I open that up and we have a mini menu in the upper right hand corner of that as well, where we can hide or show different portions of that window. So let's look at these controls and buttons in this section. The first one we'll talk about is wait for note. With wait for note, you drop into record and Pro Tools will wait to actually start moving the transport until it actually receives something from your MIDI keyboard or MIDI input device. So I put the cursor here. I'm gonna drop this MIDI one track into record. I'm gonna hit record. Pro Tools will start clicking. The click track will start clicking and it will just continue to click until it receives its first MIDI data coming in. So let's hit record and uh, it's just gonna sit here and click until I actually uh, play a note on my keyboard. And then when I play a note on my keyboard, so Pro Tools sat there and clicked and just waited for me to play something on my keyboard and then it started recording that, started rolling that. I don't use that one that often, but at certain times it's handy. So the next button over turns our click on and off. You can also do that with the seven on the number pad. So let me mute that track so you can hear the click going. Turn it on and off, seven on the number pad or using that button. So that shortcut is something that's very handy because you will turn the click on and off quite a bit during a production. Next is MIDI merge, which will merge incoming MIDI data with existing MIDI data. So I have a kick and snare that I recorded just a second ago. If MIDI merge is off and I go into record, it's going to start replacing that MIDI data with what I'm playing. So MIDI data is going away and the new stuff is being added. So if that's not what I wanted, which it isn't, um, I want to add this hi-hat to the existing kick and snare. So I'm gonna turn on MIDI merge and I'm gonna go into record and I'm gonna play that hi-hat in and you'll see those notes being added to the MIDI. So MIDI merge adds incoming MIDI to the existing MIDI, merges those two data streams together. The next button over is the conductor track, and that activates the conductor track. When it is active, the tempo ruler is active, which means I can put in tempo changes in my session, uh, allowing me to have tempo go up or down during my session. If it is inactive or off, we are in what's called manual tempo mode and our session can only have one tempo. So from here, we can set the initial tempo when the conductor track is active, or this is where we set the tempo when we are in manual tempo mode. So we'll talk more about setting tempo in class. So next we'll look at mix window views. So let's go over to the mix window. So a couple things on what we see here in this window. We can go to the view menu and mix window views, and we'll want to have generally these things check marked in our session. So we want to see instruments, inserts A through E, sends A through E, meters and faders, track color and comments. We won't really be talking about delay compensation, so we don't need to necessarily show that. 
So we can get to that same menu on the mix window in the bottom left hand corner. If we click down there, we can get right to that menu instead of having to go to the view menu. We can also right click on any of these sections. Uh, so where it says sends or insert, you can right click and get to that menu. So we do wanna be showing the instrument section because uh, we're gonna talk about that next. So next we're gonna go through the anatomy of an, a MIDI, an aux input track and an instrument track. An instrument track is quite literally an aux input and MIDI track combined into one track. So we have an aux input track and a MIDI track over here. An instrument track has the exact same functionality as those two tracks. So we'll use both of these uh, in the course. And there are reasons why I use an aux input and a MIDI track. And at times I'll use an instrument track. So there are reasons why. We'll talk about that later. So let's take a look at these tracks Starting with the MIDI track, we have the input, what MIDI source is it listening to or recording? What is the destination of the recorded MIDI? And here I have it set to expand to plugin that I have on the aux input track. So the output controls where the MIDI data is being sent, either during auditioning, during playback, or during recording. A MIDI track records and plays back MIDI. An aux input track passes, but it cannot hold any audio. So MIDI is being sent from this MIDI track to the expand plugin on the aux input track. It's being converted into audio. The output on the aux input track controls where that audio is gonna go. And that's how we put it into our mix by setting it to main out. We have pan controls on the aux input to control where the signal is in the panorama and solo and mute and a volume control for the audio portion. On the MIDI track, we have MIDI pan, MIDI volume, solo and mute and the record button. On an instrument track, up in the instrument section, you have all of the controls that we find on the MIDI track. So we have our input, set to all at this point, listening to all incoming MIDI. Our output, which does not have a destination yet because we do not have an instrument. So we're going to load up multi-channel, go to the instrument section, and we will load up boom. And we can see how the MIDI output automatically set itself to the virtual instrument that we instantiated on the instrument track. We have a MIDI volume, which is the same as this MIDI volume, and we'll get into that later. We have our record button down here, which is the same as the record button. We have a pan control, um, which is the same as the MIDI pan on a MIDI track. And those send volume and MIDI pan information, which we'll get into later. We also have a mute up in this section, which mutes the MIDI data and prevents it from being sent to the virtual instrument or the MIDI output destination. And down at the bottom, we have the exact same components as we see on an aux input track. Regarding the input, we do not have to set an input because it automatically accepts the output of a plugin instantiated on that track. So we have our output, so getting the audio back into our mix. We have pan control where it is in the panorama, just like on the aux. So we have our solo, our mute, just like the solo mute in the aux. We have the record button, which is the same record button as the MIDI channel. They just put it there for convenience rather than up in the instrument section. And we have our audio volume fader. All right, so that's a tour around those tracks. We'll start using them in the next video. So we're going to get into some recording. Thanks for watching.